Hello and welcome to About the House. Chronic disease is defined as illness that is prolonged in duration, doesn't often resolve spontaneously and is rarely cured completely. The Standing Committee on Health is currently conducting an inquiry into chronic disease prevention and management in primary health care. At a recent public hearing, the committee heard from Dr John Hall from the Rural Doctors Association of Australia, who has a practice in the Queensland town of Oakey. I met with Dr Hall and asked him why he believes the burden of chronic disease is unevenly distributed. Um, it's been known for a long time that uh, people from country areas in Australia have worse health outcomes. So they, they have shorter life expectancies, they have a significant increase in burden of disease, especially around chronic diseases, so diabetes, um, skin cancer, um, diseases involved around mental health, also um, substance abuse, um, tobacco smoking. Um, we just know from statistics that there's a significant increase um, in, in rural areas with these types of conditions and we feel that in part um, this is related to lack of access to care, lack of access to programs that might help people in these spaces but also um, we're dealing with a, a lower socioeconomic group of people generally which, um, which means that all those social determinants of health are affected um, leading to this increased burden of disease. We, we do have people with more problems with obesity, problems with diabetes, which we know is um, significantly more prevalent in, in the Indigenous community. Um, and one of the real struggles is that these people um, can't access care. You know, we, we have a good quality general practice in the town and a good hospital, but um, there are issues around um, transport, a lack of public transport, um, difficulties um, uh, socioeconomically where these people literally can't afford to travel. So it, it demands that the local health service provides much higher level care. Um, and and we, c we can provide that in part, but um, it's challenging and it, and it requires a lot of extra time a lot of extra support and it costs a significant amount more than say running a, a private practice in, in a metropolitan area. Um, when, people, it, when people get care in the country we find that they're getting high quality care so when people are able to access that care and, and they attend a GP practice or, or a GP practice nurse or diabetes educator or indigenous health worker or working with the, the local hospital people can get high level care. Um, when, when we're talking poorer health outcomes, it's more of a, a population statistic where per capita these people can't access care. We know there's a significant Medicare underspend per capita for rural people, which means that a lot of them just aren't accessing care, whether they can't get in to see their GP because it's so busy, or they live so far away that it's prohibitive, um, or or they might need specialist level care where they've been able to see their GP but they don't have the capacity to go further afield or go to a, a major centre to have a procedure done or, or, um, or the like. So there's some of the challenges and barriers but we, we feel strongly that the rural model of care is, is a good one um, because it's a close-knit community you've got patients sticking with the one doctor generally that get to know that doctor really well they get to know the practice staff well and the nurses and when people are in that system they actually have really good health outcomes so we see locally in our practice that people that are on our chronic disease programs that are having their diabetes managed through us we we get over the challenges around um, access to specialist care by involving specialists with teleconference or video conferencing or even just the doctor ringing like the GP ringing and taking specialist advice on the care of a patient can make a huge difference to someone's outcome so whilst they mightn't be able to access specialty care because of the tyranny of distance they're still getting specialty level care by having a, a coordinated multidisciplinary teamwork approach where we bring in the specialists remotely. Look, 
Um, there needs to be better funding that, re that reflects and makes that type of care possible. Currently now, like if I sit on the phone for half an hour with a specialist taking advice on a patient, that's not funded. If I ring a patient who lives out on a property and give them advice over the phone because they can't get in, that's not funded. It takes me time, but it's not funded. So that's why there's this access to care problem because I, my day might be fully booked from eight in the morning till seven at night and I'm spending some of that time on the phone or um, uh, doing other work, um, uh, sifting through red tape and paperwork, which is unfunded. So for us to provide that higher level of care effectively, we need to see better funding for the team. So better funding directly for practice nurses. So. Um, I would support um, item numbers that funded practice nurses, um, item numbers that, that supported nurse practitioners better, specifically rurally loaded, um, and also um, physician assistants and Indigenous health workers getting better access to Medicare. Also allied health, often in country towns, our allied health, we, we employ them, they use some of our space, um, and often they have viability issues themselves. So if you could block fund, um, if you could provide funding to country practices that allowed them to then employ allied health psychologists, podiatrists, physiotherapists, you would see much more of that type of care delivered locally in the bush. But there are, there are real cost um, barriers to being able to provide the, the classic super clinic in the bush because we just don't have the funding and the time and the workforce to do it. If you'd like to follow the inquiry or read the submissions, see the committee website.